Hey guys, Mark from Periphery here, and this entry I wanted to go over some seven string riffs for you. Namely, several passages from the song Flatline. For the song Flatline, I'm playing a seven string. The tuning that we use for this is uh, everything a half step down to E flat, B flat, G flat, and so on. And the seventh string is dropped an additional whole step, making that an A flat, resulting in bar chords like this. So the basis for the pre-chorus riff in the song Flatline revolves around basically two chords underneath everything. The first one being and then if you just break it down to as to what the chords are doing underneath all of the busyness, this is the, the root of the first chord. Um, the movement is all based around each position of those two chords. So I'll break down what happens in the, in the first part of it. As you can tell, there's a high emphasis on, uh, on sliding from position to position. And the beginning of the riff starts with a series of slides that can be quite tricky to pull off if you're not careful where you're sliding to and from. So it begins like this. Again, keeping in line with uh, some of the other column entries we've done, make sure you're sliding to the exact fret that you need to be sliding to. And again, this can get really tricky if you're attempting pull, to pull this off at the original speed. But again, start slow, start at the, the speed actually of the example that we just did to see if you can nail the exact frets that you're sliding to. <laughs> Next part goes. And then when it turns around, it starts the exact same, and then it goes on a little bit of a different tangent. And this fill. And if you're familiar with the song, you'll notice that uh, is a theme that reprises itself and makes itself the focal point of the song, this lick. So for this pre-chorus riff, that lick is established and then recycled and brought back as a focal point during the bridge. So the second half of the riff recycles in, in pretty much the same way, save for a few variations. The slidey bit begins the second half. That's one variation that's slightly different than, uh, than the first time that section pops up. And again, make sure that you get those strings ringing together. The original tempo, there's not a lot of space there, but again, just a little bit of those notes ringing together is effective. And then the last bit is a bit of a different fill that's unrelated to what's been played, just to sort of spice it up at the end leading into the um, uh, next riff. The next riff I wanted to explain is what I would call one of the pre-choruses. This is a, an untraditionally arranged song in that there's one clear-cut chorus, but we happen to emphasize uh, parts before both of those choruses to sort of, to sort of serve as a fake out pre-chorus. This would be the heavy dissonant one uh, that pops up twice in the song. And uh, it involves some cool examples of, uh, of dissonance and, and huge 
thick, chunky chords uh, to emphasize that. One of the uh, the trickier parts of this riff is actually the the very beginning. There's a, a short sixteenth note flutter that's that's uh, oddly placed. I, I say that because a lot of these sixteenth note bits in our riffs don't happen to come at the very beginning of a riff. So this is how it begins. And you're only hitting three of those notes, so it's not an even amount, leading right into a hammer on and that can make it a little bit clumsy if you're not careful. So those are the first, that's the first series of notes. When you play it up to speed, you'll notice that the faster you get, the, the more slap-like your left hand is gonna become. You're gonna wanna really hit the fretboard hard with your ring finger to, to fret that fifth fret. Again, the next palm mutes, you want to get that big open. Not one note, not one, not two notes, not three notes, everything. Four notes, that's the, that's the gent chord. And then that's uh, an octave on one and three on the sixth string. Just slid up to any ambiguous place on the fretboard. And again, the, the intent there is just to add some uh, dissonance and chaos to the riff. And then the second time you slide it up, you slide to the ninth fret, and you immediately slide down one fret. Sorry, before you slide down to that fret, pick this first string. And again, one of the beautiful things about these three notes is that you get a very sinister, ugly sounding dissonance. So again, make sure you get those three notes rubbing up against each other. Make sure you give it that little English too. That's a, that's a little nuance you can spin on the riff. 